Okay. Um, okay. So today we uh, kind of set aside limits and continuity and such a little bit. Uh, if you've had AP Physics with Oculus, this will be review. If you've had regular AP, regular Physics, uh, this is kind of expanding what you maybe learn a little bit. Uh, if you haven't had any of it, no big deal. Uh, key thing today again is don't sit and just say, uh, this isn't making sense. Just pretend to say it doesn't make any sense. Like I do my best to read your body language, but I can't always tell. So, um, okay, here we go. Um, on the AP test, they uh, always have multiple questions. So this is not a small topic again. This is pretty big. Where they will talk about a moving particle. Uh, sometimes they try to get all tricky instead of calling it a moving particle. They'll say Carrie has a unicycle, and Carrie rides back and forth on her unicycle. Same thing, okay? Just something going back and forth. Like they use all kinds of words to make it sound confusing, but it's really just there's an object. The object is going back and forth. Um, they do not give questions where the object travels in a more complex manner, like this. Like the object doesn't go up as it's going to the right, and then go down as it's going to the right. It, it just goes back and forth. Understand the number? Okay. Um, huge topic for the year. This symbol, x of t, represents the x-axis position of the particle. They say x-axis not because it's going along this axis. It's because the particle is moving horizontally. So what I always do is I use the front of the room to act out the particle. Like I am the particle. Okay, and I move back and forth as it takes the room. Um, so that's what X represents, the particle's position. Like where is the particle at some moment in time? It could be anywhere, but X represents the position of the particle. Units are important on the AP test. If, you, if units are given in the problem, and if you do not include units in the answer, you will possibly lose points. So you must acquire the habit of including units in your answers when units are given. Okay, I refer to the position as an example of an amount. There are other examples on the AP test. It's common to give an example where they give a water tank. And they say, oh, at time equals zero, there are 50 gallons of water in the tank. That's an amount. So I use this abbreviation all the time, just AMT. Uh, as you progress through the year, when we get at the end where we're doing the full AP test, something you're going to have to do over and over again as you read questions is figure out from the question, are they talking about an amount or are they talking about a rate? Like it's critical that you understand what are you starting with? Are you starting with the rate and they're asking you to find an amount or is it the other way around? Okay, so super important that when you see something like this, as you read the problem, you say, oh, this isn't a rate. It, it's no, it's, there's no per anything. It's just an amount, like how much of something. Velocity, by comparison, is a rate. Uh, it's the rate at which the position changes. So, for example, if I were to say, the position of the particle is, I don't know, making up some numbers. Let's say the position of the particle is 11 meters. Okay, so in the front of the room, that would mean the particle is like right here. That's position zero here in the middle. So here I am, I'm the particle, I'm at 11. That's an amount, it's like where I am. If they then tell you that the particle has a velocity that is constant, and that velocity is, say, two meters per second, okay, the rate always reflects how fast the amount is changing. That's why the units correspond. So the units of position here are meters, 
the units of the amount have to be meters per something. I said that backwards. Sorry. If, the, if, the unit, if the units of the amount are meters, the units of the rate have to be meters per something, always. So here are meters per second. So it's saying that this position will change by this many meters every second. So a quick question just to make sure you got it. Uh, let's say three seconds go by. What would be the new position of the particle? Where's your you know? Particle's right here now. Particle's position is changing at this rate in three seconds. What will be the new position of the particle? Yeah. Okay, everybody feel free to you can always talk to each other, it's fine. What's the new position of the particle? Go catch it. So Kylie votes 17. Raise your hand if you vote with Kylie. Point two for Kylie. Questions about anything? Okay, next thing. Um, there is a special word that is used on the AP test a lot. Um, and it doesn't mean what most students would guess that it means. They'll say things like, at time equals zero, the particle is at the origin. They're not talking about this origin, like the origin of the graph. They're talking about me walking back and forth across the room. And they refer to the center of the room as the origin. So the center is the origin, not this origin. So if they say the particle is at the origin, I'm here. Okay? So I can be at the origin many, many times as I pace back and forth. Like I may start here, I may move to the left in like one second, two seconds, three seconds, four, five. Hey, at time six, I'm back at the origin. And I kind of go this way. Seven, eight, nine, time goes by. Oh, look, at time 10, I'm back at the origin. Questions about what's meant by origin. Memorize that. It shows up in questions all the time. The origin, the origin is, so So remember, the park was just moving back and forth. You'll see it in a minute, Josh. I'm going to use it. So the park is moving back and forth. Every time, like right here, is my location negative or positive? Negative, negative something. So just, hold on. So just so everybody knows. The door has this weird quirk, and uh, Sophie's feeling awkward because she's staying outside the door. But it's a good opportunity to explain. Um, the door has this weird quirk that when you exit the door, you often will push on the button, and then it locks. So just that's why it locks. And then if you turn it, it stays locked. Sorry about that. It locks that still all the time. You were talking about you while you were right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Um, so my position is negative, right, Josh? Yeah. I move this way. Right now, my position is the origin. And then move some more. So the origin doesn't change. The origin is always right there. But the particle can be at the origin at all kinds of different times. That's true. Oh, perfect. Everybody in the room is going to answer this. So pause right there. Three points for Matt. Uh, shoot, take it. Um, <laughs> Josh. Uh, everyone in the room is going to answer this one. So does anyone have any questions about, before I give the bonus question here, any questions about what is meant by the origin? Please. Wait, so is the origin always where it would start at? Or can the origin be like two seconds later, then it hits the origin, and then... Yes. Okay. Yeah, a good example of that, Sydney, would be uh, the particle at time equals zero is at location negative five. And then the particle moves and turns out that at time equals six, particles at the origin. Yeah, so that's what mixes people up. You see origin and you think original. It doesn't mean that. Does that answer your question? Three points, please. So the origin is just at the center of the line? Yep. And not this line, my line that I'm moving on. Ashley, please. So does it matter where you are like on the Y-axis, if you're in the origin line. Oh, so hold your question too. You're in the Josh's guy over there. 
really good question. I'm trying to build a question for the class here. So, um, is it okay? Other question? So look here. It's on your sheet. The blue one, yours isn't color coded. Oh, printing is still too expensive. The blue one is the position graph. Okay. Now, this graph goes up and down. The particle does not go up and down. I'm the particle. I just go back and forth. But the blue graph still shows my position. Uh, as you, for example, let's get everyone to answer this. Uh, right here is time equal negative two. And that dot is about at 90, sorry, neg yeah, positive 90. Raise your hand if you could tell me where on this line would I be if my position is 90. This hands up. Like where am I in my travels if my position is, the graph says right here, time equal negative 2, the position is 90. Where would I be on my line? The graph isn't me. The graph's just a graph. The graph just records where I am. Allie? So I'm way over there, 90. Who had their hand raised and knew it? Point. So I'm confused you because a lot of people aren't raising their hand. What typically mixes people up is they think they are looking at a picture of the movement. So don't. You're not looking at a picture of the movement. You're just looking at a bunch of numbers. And the numbers reflect information about the movement. Like right here, this dot points for the whole room. This dot has an x coordinate. This dot has a y coordinate. Raise your hand if you can tell me. I just said what they were. What's the x and y coordinate of this dot? Come on, points for everybody. What is the x and y coordinate of this dot? Still so Sophie? So I said that the coordinates here are negative 2, comma 90. How many knew it? Point. Okay. The graph is just a bunch of dots. Each dot has two numbers, but they're just a bunch of dots. <coughs> the dots just tell me information about the movement. The graph doesn't visually show the movement. I didn't do this. I didn't like fall and then go. I didn't do any of that. Okay, so get that out of your head. This just says at this time. I'm over there, location 9. Question. So, right here, what are the two dots? Hands up, come on. What are the two numbers? Right there, let's go canyon. Um, negative 1 and 10. Negative 1, about 10 ish, you know, maybe 15, I don't know. Good enough, it's just an estimate. How many knew it? Point, okay. Hands up, what does it mean? Come on, come on, what does that mean? What do the two numbers mean? What are they representing? Go, oh, Chris. Uh, is it you're kind of a little over here? Very good. So 90, it's a little hard to show because the room's short. 90, I'm way over there. That's at time equal negative 2. Time equal negative 1, I'm at 15. So now I'm here. 90 is way over there. How many know it? Point. Questions? We get back to Josh and Ash in a second. So, like, where you know, far you are? Is that basically the Perfect. The x coordinate doesn't have anything oh. to do with my motion. It's just time. The y value is where I am. So, x is time. Y is where you're at. Yep. Okay. When you're looking at the position graph, x is time. Y is where I'm at. <laughs> is that always the case in the position graph? Mm -hmm. Perfect. The, the one alternative would be this, Calvin. If the particle happened to be, which I cannot demonstrate very well because I don't have a pole to climb up and down. Um, bad joke. Okay. I'd like an elevator. That'd be cool. I'd be like, if I could design my own classroom, it would be so cool. <laughs> so first of all, I would somehow make it like, uh, so who's been to Disney California and been on like the Soaring Over California ride? Like my room would be like that. <laughs> like you walk in, right? 
and you all climb in your seats, you buckle up, and I push the button, and you all just rise up like in front of me. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like everybody's like right here. It's so cool. Get the cabin. What do you think? You know? <laughs> be like awesome. <laughs> I have like an elevator here that goes like up and down, down into the floor and demonstrate up and down motion. Um, well, there's that problem with the um, I forgot what the heck we're talking about. Oh yeah, Calvin, if the particle is moving up and down, uh, the position graph still tells me the exact same information. The x coordinate still tells me the time. The y coordinate still tells still tells me where I am. It's just I'll be moving up and down instead. You said if we're going left to right, the y So if we're going up and down, the y stay the same. So everybody answers this for Justin. It's a good question. Hey, look out! Come on. So. Lost track of who said it, apologies. But we talked about how at negative time equal negative two, position is 90, so way over there. Time equal negative one, position is 15. Not so far over here. If I'm going up and down, raise your hand if you can tell me, what does negative two come and 90 mean? Don't overthink it, it's not a trick question. If I'm traveling up and down, what will negative two come and 90 mean? Let's go, Kennedy. Um. Good question. Good question. Doesn't change at all, actually. So the negative 2 is still your time. The 90 is simply where you are. So I'm like way up there. <laughs> Does that make sense? So yeah, it doesn't change. It's the same thing. Okay, so specifically tell you if you want to be up or down or left or right? Correct. Okay, so. Yeah, like, hey, no, awesome, listen. So they say here's a graph of position. You don't know which way the thing is moving unless they tell you. So in this point that we're talking about, could be going up or down or left or right? Correct. Okay. Because they said x of t, x means horizontal. Y would be up and down. But they sometimes use the generic s, and they have to tell you. Your question, please. So if you're on like the kind of on the right of kind of the thing down here, yeah. Would that mean you were like left? Perfect. Look right here. Here is time five. And the position down here, so that's time equal five. Position is about negative, what is that, 160 ish, almost. Hands up. Chris got it. What does that mean? Come on, hands. What do those two numbers mean? People are coming back now. Some people are staring at the walls. Abby, we're over here. Very negative. Let me do it. Point. Question. Please. So, in this situation, because it's x of t, is basically the x-axis axis the origin. So, like for this, for the five negative. Sixty like five seconds after you hit the origin, you're 160 like feet away from the origin. Good question. Um, the origin has nothing to do with time at all. It's simply the center of the movement. So if I define this as the center of my movement, this is what I'm calling as the origin. Um, in this particular, and so yes, when when I'm at location <coughs> negative 160, I am in, I'm 160 meters to the left of the origin. When I am at location 15, I am 15 meters to the right of the origin. That's perfect. Just don't throw in the time element. In this particular case, they do coincide. At time equals zero, because the location is zero, the particle is at the origin at time equals zero. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. It's important. So, Oh, yeah, go ahead. That line basically tells you where they're at at a specific time, that line. And since the line is going through zero, zero, that's the origin. Is that what you're saying? Close. We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay. Two points. Would it just be that it's on, like, zero is on, like, 
kind of like the Y, because that's like our meters, because then we're going right to the left. Hey, question from the whole room. I think it speaks back to what Josh asked a long time ago. I kind of lost track of Ashley's question, but I want to go back to it. Okay, based on our discussion, the blue graph is not a curve, remember, it's just a bunch of dots. And every dot has a time, and every dot has a y value, but that y value tells me where the park lives. So, raise your hand if you could come. I won't ask you to do it, I just want to know who feels confident. Who feels that they could come to the board and point to the exact time when the particle returns to the origin? Like in this particular graph, the particle at time equals zero was at the origin, and then it moved. When does the particle return and hit the origin again? Um, if your hand is not raised, talk to someone whose hand is raised so you can get the points as well. of the particle is zero. It's at this spot here. How many got it? Two four. Please give Is there ever a time when the origin is not going to be zero? The origin is by definition on the AP test always location zero. Just keep separate. This graph has an origin, which is right here. Okay. And on this particular example, the blue points do have a zero comma zero. So that says when time is zero, the particle is at location zero. It's here. But that's a coincidence. That doesn't have to be that way. The blue graph could have looked like this. Yeah, just like with that red graph, that Correct. Now another thing, listen, point for Justin. Carrie asked this as well. Okay, right here, the red graph has a point whose y coordinate is zero. But that has nothing to do with the origin. Because that's acceleration. 
And we want to refer to that was the blue graph. Right. If this was the position graph, then in fact, let's ask that for the whole room. If the red graph depicted position, it doesn't, but if it did, raise your hand if you can tell me. How many times would the particle have been at the origin? The red graph is the position graph. How many times would the particle have been at the origin if the red is the position? Let's go, Sarah. Twice. How many agree with Sarah? Twice. Two points. Yeah. Does that answer that question? Oh. Ashley, I, Ashley, I forgot your question. I apologize. Um, oh, it was, so you said the origin is in the middle of the graph, but does it matter where you are? Yeah, you did. Okay, just making sure. So you're feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Anybody help? Please. Does slope on the blue graph take velocity? Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, because we're talking about origin, position, all that sort of thing. Oh, let's keep going. So, um, you need to get this on your calculator. So, put those in. If you window from negative two to seven, you should see exactly what you see here. So you need a calculator. Oh, so I need you to, uh, yes, you need a calculator here. Um, so you don't have one. I am. So do you have one for Yeah, well, where we're just going to find one. Gotcha. We just have a five, yeah. Oh, I get you. Um, you'll be OK. Today, we're not actually sitting in the floor. So if you don't get it by Tuesday, um, yeah, they have them on sale at Walmart for $100. Yeah. Um, talk to me, I can loan you one. Um, so I don't know if you want to work out. Yeah, because the wife's been trying to be trusted. Give me some. Something you remember. There's two. The calculators are not valuable enough to steal, but people just forget. The person have no calculators. Ah, oh, give me back my calculator. Hold on, one second.
couple things I've noticed so far. Um, in this class, it's crucial that you uh, get the window to be what you want. So, a um, couple other things first, sorry. Some people do not are not acquainted with the following feature. Uh, you'll need this in this class. Uh, I've got three equations entered, but I've currently set the calculator to only plot two of them. Because I was doing that later earlier today. So down here, you need to highlight the equal sign. Press enter to turn it on. So that's one thing to remember. You'll need that. Uh, no, that's totally up to you. Is everybody okay with that? If you want to change the colors, you go like this. Just highlight the color. Press enter. Wow. Come on. <laughs> life is such so, like the simplest things in life are the best, right? You know, it's, like, yeah. it's like I'm just so excited. I go. It's like late at night. I'm hungry. I, I need to eat some dinner. I've got my Subway sandwich. I go to the refrigerator. There's a nice can of like soda that I enjoy. It's just like life is simple pleasure. But if it's not there, it's like dang. <laughs> I gotta go to the store. <laughs> um, anyway. Hey. Uh, any questions on how to change the uh, turn it on and off? Okay, another thing uh, that everyone needs to be aware of. So I want everyone to do this. So watch me. This happens quite frequently. Uh, it, ha it happens accidentally, but if it happens to you during the AP test, um, tears are likely to follow. <laughs> so it's it's crucial it's crucial that you understand so that you don't have any tears. You just oh I remember and you just fix it. Okay, look, go like this, arrow up until you're highlighting the plot one. So everybody do it. Like it's, it's way more exciting if you do it with me. So. <laughs> Highlight the plot one. Press enter so that it is turned on. So everyone's got plot one turned on. Now do um, just take graph. Yeah. Did everybody do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That is not a desired effect. No. Okay. Um, so, just remember that happens quite a bit. If that happens to you, like if, you, if the calculator is not working, the first thing I look for is to see if I've accidentally turned on the plot. Just go there first. Okay. Turn it back off. Everything's fine. Another feature many people are not acquainted with. If I'm watching the graph draw and I realize it's not what I want, I don't want to wait. Press on, it will stop. No way. Wait, bro. Wait. Bro, the right word. Um, no one ever tells anybody. It's like, isn't that the best thing ever? Wait, is this wait, dang, it's wrong. <laughs> right? Wait, yeah. 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 Come on. <laughs> Press the on key. <laughs> what? what? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Wait, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to give you a cup of Okay. 
They would need me to re-demonstrate the ability to stop the graph so you don't get annoyed. Wow. Okay, next That's thing. So cool. Next thing, look. Um, it's also critical on the calculus test that you get the window right. If the window's wrong, you, I've seen people miss questions just because the window was wrong. So you read the problem carefully, it usually gives you enough information to get the right window. Uh, so what I always do, if you have an inspire it, we'll do this as well, just the sequence is a little different. I get window, and I figure out, you know, how far right do I need my window to go? Uh, for today, 0 to 0.3 is going to be useful here in a minute, so we'll just use that. But the one you're trying to get was like negative 2 to 7. Just type negative 2, then 7. Don't change anything else. Uh, now you're going to press the zoom menu. Well, I feel like my y min is like some decimal. Ignore everything else. You change the x min, you change the x max, you ignore everything else, you hit zoom. The one you want is not displayed. So don't scroll. Painful. Um, just hit zero. Zero is zoom fit. And my calculator runs really slow because they apparently want you to be able to watch every single pixel of error. <laughs> that should have fixed many of your problems. Michaela, is that work better? Store? I have some. Store? Yeah. I have no software. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait, wait. How come yours says color? We have the same thing. Funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard. It's mad. What is the color? It's all like that. I don't care about silver or whatever. I don't like care if it's color. It um, does help to have the color. Question? Please. Oh, from the problem. So most of the time, there'll be information in the problem that will indicate that. For the homework, I just kind of tell you. So. Um, or sometimes you just have to make a reasonable guess based on the question. Okay. Show me a character if you have this, please. Just hold it up. Have you got it? Two points. Okay, next thing. is an amount and you've got to be able to judge that from your reading on calculus problems it is not a rate it's not per anything it's just meters okay the velocity we did a little example is the rate at which the position changes so I call that the rate uh, in many calculus problems they will refer to the rate at which the rate is changing so I call that the rate of the rate and I'm lazy so I just put R on okay it's just for your notes. This isn't like official notation or anything. So, but you've got to keep track of it. Like it's crucial that when you read the problem, you can say, oh, I got it. They're giving me the rate of a rate. And hey, they want me to find the rate itself. You know, that's what you've got to judge. So keep track of that. Notice the units again. 
The amount of units here are meters. Therefore, the units of the rate must be meters per something. Okay? The units of the rate of the rate follow the same pattern. So right here, we did an example where we said something like the position is 11 meters. And the position is changing by 2 meters every second. Okay, so the rate of the rate follows the same pattern. So maybe the acceleration, in this case, is going to be, I don't know, let's say negative four. The units of acceleration will be these same units, meters per second. Because this is telling you how this changes. So these units have to be meters changing every second. This one has to be meters per second changing every second. That's why it's meters per second squared, okay? And it has to follow that pattern. It will for every problem. Question? Can you just repeat that? Uh-huh. So, let's do a separate example. I'll have you help me. I'll keep track of your points. You learn a whole bunch. Great. It's a good thing, promise. It's the best game ever. Okay. Kennedy, big one. Okay, if we're talking about um, a water tank, we might say that the amount of water in the tank is measured in gallons. So that's the amount. If we're measuring time in seconds, if the water level's falling, you would say the water level's changing by some number of what? Gallons per, per second. Because you've got a certain number of gallons they're dropping by a certain number of gallons per second. Does that make sense? Okay, but that drop, gallons per second, so there you'd have like, you know, I don't know, 200 gallons or something. These units have to be these units because the rate has to show how this changes. So it has to say, oh, this is how many gallons you have, but you're losing gallons by 12 well, how often do you lose 12 gallons? Every second. That pattern is always consistent. This is going to tell you how this is changing. So therefore, the units of this one, the rate of the rate, will be these same units. So, so many gallons per second, maybe three every second. Five point. I don't know if that helped, though. OK. Question. Please. So if it's a positive three on the rate of the rate, would that make it so it would lose less and less? Or was that because of Yes. Something? Watch. Good question. Two for Justin. Look up. Everybody's going to answer this one. Okay. Ignore this for a minute. Yeah. The water level is dropping by 12 gallons every second. It's going down by 12 gallons every second. But that rate is changing by this rate. That's why this is the rate at which the rate changes. What's, like how fast will the water level be dropping in say three seconds from now? Like this is how fast the water level is dropping right now. It's going down 12 gallons every second. But this tells you how fast this is changing. So this says, oh, every time a second goes by, this rate will go up by three. So what would the new rate be in three seconds? Should we have to talk to each other? Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Remember, you've got the amount. This is throughout the whole year. Amount, the rate, and the rate of the rate. The rate of the rate describes how this changes. So three seconds from now, how fast will the water level be dropping? Show me hands. Three seconds from now, how fast is the water level dropping? Easily. So Aisley votes negative three. How many vote with her? Two points. 
it says every time a second goes by, this rate will change by three. So the rate's currently negative 12. One second from now, the rate will be negative nine. That's how we, that's what it means by amount, rate, and rate of the rate. Okay, so if the net was negative, it would get faster. Get more negative. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Perfect. Here's the best news of the day. Once you're comfortable with the fact that this is an amount, and this number simply tells you the rate at which this amount changes, the relationship between these two is exactly the same as the relationship between these two. There's nothing really new to learn. This tells you the rate at which this changes. This one tells you the rate at which this one changes. Okay. Question. Perfect. Uh, next thing. So let's go. Okay, I showed you how to uh, change the window. So get, actually, yeah, get this plot on your screen. Go. Just change the window from zero to two. Just window real quick. Just change it from zero point three. Zoom fit should show right up. Instantaneous rate of change of position. That must be memorized. Velocity is the instantaneous rate of change of position. They'll say it different ways. They'll say things like it's the instantaneous rate at which the position is changing. Um, the key thing is to separate 
clearly the difference between instantaneous and average. Okay. Instantaneous means right at this moment. So you are actually probably a lot more familiar. Well, how do I say this? In previous classes, you have most likely, unless you had AP Physics with Calculus, you most likely were studying average velocity. Because instantaneous is a lot more difficult to study. That's why we have calculus. Okay. Um, but in your life experience, you have far more experience with, um, honestly, like a simple. So examples. Okay. If you're in your car, you start at zero, and you press on the gas pedal, and you go faster and faster. Your velocity is different at every single instant in time. Right? That's instantaneous velocity. Like it's a different velocity at every instant. If you go out and run a mile and you time yourself, and it turns out you ran that mile in, let's say you're reasonably quick, five minutes. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, we're kind of a proud family. My daughter won the Desert News Marathon this year, so it's kind of fun. Um, first time she ever ran a marathon. Uh, yeah. It's kind of exciting, right? The way she looked at the times ahead of time. She kind of planned her training schedule and she like kind of looked at their times, kind of thought how much she could train. She ran in college. She's kind of she she No. She, um, and she thought, yeah, I think I can place like top three. But about mile 21, somebody yelled at her, you're in second place. <laughs> She's like, oh, cool. She could see the lady up there. She's like, I think I can. Um, <laughs> that's real, that's real <laughs> in, man. Um, I'm losing time. Bells are ringing. Listen, you got to know the difference between average and instantaneous. Okay. Average, if I run the mile in five minutes, it doesn't mean I was running the same rate the whole time. Like it kind of varied, but on average, that so average is over time. Instantaneous is like a given moment. The bell's gonna ring. Look at me. No more tonight. Um, we're just kind of at a place where we got to get the big ideas a little more solid before I go like even more pieces. You're welcome. Like your wallet, car keys, children back, don't see this. Thank you. Thanks, Abby.